It's called the King of Birds and is revered and respected by cultures worldwide. If Eagle shows up for you repeatedly or in a significant way, you can be assured that a powerful spiritual guide has flown into your life. If you've been seeing eagles a lot lately, if you've dreamed of them, or if you've just always been attracted to them, or even a little scared of them, stay tuned because in this video, we're going to take a little journey into the world of eagle to explore its spiritual meaning and what messages it might be carrying to you. Eagle is one of 42 animals featured in my Spirit Animal Awareness Oracle deck. If you're interested in checking that out, I'll put the link below. So let's just start with a little background introduction of the eagle as an animal itself. Um, it is a big bird and um, it's a raptor or bird of prey in the same family of, of birds as hawks, kites, and old world vultures. And there are about 60 species of eagle worldwide. So quite a lot of variation between species. Um, most are noted for their size, their extremely sharp eyesight, and their fearlessness. So let's take a look at, first of all, this aspect of the eagle that uh, we're looking at the eagle as the king of the sky. Um, and, and really their size is a, a big factor in this. While the smallest ones are no bigger than a large hawk, large species of eagle can have a wingspan of seven feet or more. And the eagle is what we know of as an apex predator, meaning it's at the top of the food chain. And so it has no natural enemies as adults. Of course, a lot of things you know, will try to prey on um, the young of any creature. So the, the young are more vulnerable. But an adult eagle, once it reaches its full size, it doesn't have a lot to fear aside from humans. Um, Okay, so this combined with their domination of the skies is why so many spiritual traditions around the world consider eagle to be a divine bird. It's associated with spirit, with creator gods, and with power gods. And it's very commonly considered also to be a solar totem with ties to the sun because it, you know, it's up there, it soars along with that sun. And in some traditions, you think of the sun as a bird or an eagle flying across the sky. Eagle is also connected with thunder and lightning, so power and light from above. And for instance, the, the Greek thunder god Zeus was often depicted with an eagle, and this acted as his messenger, but sometimes he would even transform himself into one. The eagle is highly regarded by Native American peoples as well and regarded by many as, as a messenger from Creator. And it's also closely related to the legendary Thunderbird, a powerful supernatural being of thunder and lightning. Eagle embodies divine power, which is why it is so commonly used in heraldry and is a symbol for warriors, armies, and nations. And for example, a double-headed eagle was the symbol of the Roman Empire. And the eagle is the national bird and symbol of the United States. But there are many, many, you know, different nations and countries uh, throughout history and across the world that have used e eagle as a symbol, as well as families that shows up in heraldry and so forth. Um, but let's not forget that divine power also includes divine retribution so if you think of the story of Prometheus, the fire bringer who uh, stole fire from the gods, this is a Greek myth, he stole fire from the gods to give to mankind. And as punishment, he was chained to a mountain where an eagle descended every day to eat his liver, which would grow back at night only to be eaten again the next day. So there's a certain ruthlessness that's associated with eagle and that is, can be considered one of the shadow aspects of eagle. So it's really no wonder that the Nazis adopted the eagle as a heraldic symbol, and they called that the Reichsadler. Okay, so if we're looking at, you know, that side of eagle, that, like the Nazis and other regimes like that, do embody the shadow side of eagle energy, which is really what eagle energy looks like when you have that divine power running backwards. Okay, um, so eagle has a lot of masculine energy. I really consider it a masculine totem, even though 
like all animals, it's got male and female eagles. And in fact, the, the female is usually a bit larger in, in most, or uh, I think most species. But overall, I really view it as a kind of a masculine totem. And so I, I really hate the, the term toxic, toxic masculinity, but that, that does kind of describe the kind of abuse of power that shows up when this eagle energy goes dark. So we do see the bullying side of eagle in nature as a very common behavior of eagles is to steal prey from ospreys and other birds of prey. You'll see them kind of diving, dive bombing the osprey so, and just steal, stealing the fish right away from it. So in, in spiritual work, if we want to counter that influence, um, there's, you know, you can call on all the positive aspects of the eagle. There's one super positive archetype that I'd like to kind of call out here that does carry that eagle energy. That's the Hindu god Vishnu. And Vishnu is known as the preserver or the sustainer of life. And he embodies the divine masculine who with his divine vision, it preserves and protects that which is sacred and good in the world. And Vishnu's vehicle, the, the companion animal that he'll ride is the Garuda, and, and which is an eagle or a, an eagle-like beast who is often also associated with royalty. Now you don't have to be Hindu or, or you know, do any kind of worship to really appreciate the symbolism of Vishnu and, and just to kind of see that as a symbol of, of this beautiful divine masculine power in the world. So one thing about eagles and their size, their large wings and bodies do require a lot of energy to lift off and fly. And because of this, they don't like to waste their energy. So they'll look for updrafts and air currents that allow them to soar and glide with minimal effort. And to me, this speaks of a couple things. One, you know, eagles really talking about taking your higher path, having that higher you know, that higher vision, you know, uh, that, that direct connection with source. And sometimes, you know, that's, that's, that's a lot of weight to carry, right? I mean, it's, it's a more difficult road sometimes to take the higher path. Um, you know, ultimately it's not, but, but it takes effort, right? To lift yourself up and take that higher path. And it does take energy because there's all sorts of stuff that wants to keep you down, right? And so we can kind of take a cue from Eagle in that, you know, looking for ways that we can stay kind of uh, things that will keep uplifting us, which often makes our life easier, right? Things that feel uplifting. Um, and if they truly are uplifting to us, usually it will be something that, that, that helps us out, right? And so looking for those and not wasting their energy on, you know, um, unnecessary efforts. So really knowing, like, kind of having that, that looking out for the opportunity and those things that are uplifting. Another aspect of eagle that's like super, super important is the vision. Okay, we hear about eagle eyes, right? Having an eagle eye or keeping an eagle eye out for something. Eagles have extremely sharp eyesight and it works out to like instead of 20-20, which is perfect vision for a person, a vision for an eagle, they have 24 vision. So it's like five times better than a person with perfect vision. and combine this with like they also have nearly twice the field of vision that a human does so they can see basically in panoramic vision um, and they've, they're, they've got these super light sensitive eyes um, about five times more light sensitive cells per unit of area in their retina so they're really really visually aware okay and it's another interesting thing about them is that they've got a lot of interesting things about the eagle vision. They've got much more sophisticated color vision than humans. They can see way into the UV range. And they've got actually, instead of one, they have two focal points in their eyes. So one is for focusing straight ahead and one focuses off to the side about 45 degrees and that helps them to focus at a great, great distance. So they can see like a rabbit at like two or three miles away. And 
spiritually, this has a lot of symbolism here. This really is very meaningful. Okay, so this incredible eyesight of the eagle equates to extreme spiritual clarity and the ability to see multidimensionally. Okay, and the fact that they have both panoramic and focused vision, and both of these are well developed, indicates a real wholeness and unity. Okay. Um, Panoramic vision is like this holistic vision, and it's it's typically it's a more feminine way of seeing things, and 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 the focused vision is a more masculine way. So this is really indicating, even though I, I just said that that eagle has that kind of masculine energy, but it also has this unified, you know, um, ability to kind of see in both different ways, a, ability to shift between the dimensions, and as a guide the eagle can help you to see the bigger picture and understand from a more multi-dimensional perspective. Um, couple limitations or shadow side aspects related to the eagle's vision. One that it does not have very good night vision. Okay, so one thing that I've noticed about people with a lot of the the eagle kind of energy is that they can be unwilling or it can be very hard for them to look into the shadows and especially it can be really hard to see the shadows within themselves okay so if you are have a lot of eagle energy it's a really really important to remember humility okay Humility is a huge, huge, huge lesson that a lot of times eagle people need to assimilate. And all of us do, all of us do. But um, if you have eagle energy in particular, it's very, very easy to overlook the shadow aspect of yourself or it, when you see it to be extremely kind of um, judgmental about it and you beat up on yourself, right? So it's the call is to have some compassion and you can sometimes call on gentler spirit animals looking sometimes at uh, the, the some of the prey of eagle maybe a deer or a rabbit or something to be a little bit more gentle with yourself and other people as well another interesting story that i was told about eagles um my my husband actually used to work with eagles with the, in doing some falconry and as also as in terms of working with animal rehabilitation and worked with eagles a couple times and he said that no matter like if you put an eagle in a dark room and had even just a sliver of light coming through a crack in the curtain because they put them in the dark room to calm them down if they needed to heal but if they could see that sliver of light they their vision was so precise they could see right through and they would actually try to fly through the crack in the curtain so it was like a matter of their perception being broader than their actual reach so if you are um if you're dealing with eagle energy and if you've found yourself frustrated by not being able to reach your goals, you might want to really take a, a a good look at, like it's really easy for eagle people to see this huge big picture and have this huge picture in their mind, like, like and, and it's easy when you're really good at envisioning, you know, to, to be, you know, either impatient or to have this feeling like, oh, you know, you've already envisioned it, so you might want to be going on to something else or to to kind of act as though you've got more resources than you do. Um, so it's important to look at the close in kind of close to home or smaller picture or the, the, the nitty gritty details that are kind of close to home in addition to the, the grand vision. Right, um, I think a lot of CEO types are often will have a lot of this ego energy, the the drive, the power, the vision, and so it's really important. It can be important for these people to have others around them that can help them to navigate the the mundane aspects of you know any kind of plan. Um, so finally, let's look at some of the relationships that eagle might have with other totems because that can teach us a lot as well. Often we look at the predator-prey relationships and we'll look at a few of those in just a minute. Um, first, I want to touch on a couple related totems that 
that really aren't normally predator prey in a big way. One is lion, and while eagle and lion don't typically interact very much in nature, it's really common for eagle and lion to show up together in heraldry or in myth and or even merged together into one fantastical beast. So there are, there are quite a few beasts that are made up of both eagle and lion or have, have characteristics of both. Um, probably the most well-known would be the griffin, who is sort of like a half eagle, half lion. And the reason these two animals show up together so often is not because of any relationship between the two in nature, but because they both represent this power or kingly kind of energy. The eagle being the king of birds or the king of the air, and the lion being the king of beasts or the king of the jungle, right? So an earth-based kind of king. Um, so they're both carrying a very similar energy. When you take those two and you combine them together you're really kind of augmenting the power of both so a griffin has often been seen as a protector of wealth and also a symbol of divine power and I believe that Garuda Vishnu's eagle also um, had some in some in some representations will have some lion aspects to it um, let's look at also the relationship with crow and eagles will sometimes raid the nests of smaller birds and because of this crows well any raptor right crows are really well known for harassing birds of prey especially eagles and there's even been documented instances of the crow actually coming up behind and riding the eagle so they are really pretty merciless the crows are in the in harassing the eagle and so crows have a lot of a lot of symbolism you might want to look up my um, video on crow and raven if you haven't yet if, if crows are coming up in conjunction with the eagle for you but one of the yes one of the um, symbols of symbolism associated with crow is the trickster okay and I think this is when when eagle shows up and the crow is harassing it a lot of times that's really kind of showing this relationship between your higher self and the trickster self okay the eagle you know as a totem is going to take you on your higher path you know if you're if you're riding that light aspect of eagle it's all about you know taking your higher path finding your higher self really connecting with spirit and when you do that you are going to get tricksters showing up okay and the reason is it's they're there to test you and ultimately it's it's they're helping you to kind of not go like they show up when you're either when you're just heading on to your higher path to try to get you off, right? It's a test. Are you strong enough to do this? Or they will show up to kind of, if you've been on the higher path, they'll show up to try to, um, you know, if you're starting to stray off the path, they'll show up. Okay. And so the trickster can show up internally as, um, you know, maybe internal doubts, fears, or so, so on, or they can manifest externally, you know, that person that's just annoying or, you know, somebody who's trying to pull you into a direction that doesn't suit you, okay? So the eagle, of course, is a far more powerful animal than the crow. If he tried, he could take out a, tr a crow, but the thing is, the crows are very nimble, and often they there are a lot of them. You'll see the crows mobbing a bird of prey, okay? So if he tried to go after the crows and take off after them and take them out, he would really quickly exhaust him, okay? And one thing about birds of prey, if they get their, their energy depleted, and it, it, it grounds them. They can't fly, right? They need to conserve their energy and stay focused in order to, to have that energy so that they can stay aflight. So the eagle has a really simple and brilliant solution. It's to rise higher, okay? So the eagle can fly higher than the crow, and so he teaches us to stay calm and focused. Don't leave your truth, but rise above the situation, and eventually the tormentors will leave you alone. Okay, so whatever that means to you to rise above, it can mean to just refocus or to, you know, just 
step out of the situation. You can rise above that way sometimes. Whatever it takes to rise above, <laughs> you know, whatever is coming after you, that's the lesson that ego brings. Okay, so to, let's take a look at some of the actual predator-prey relationships. Um, small prey is one. Eagles are, you know, maybe a large eagle might weigh about, about 10 pounds, and so they can actually, you know, um, a lot of what they eat is something that they can actually lift and fly away with. So rabbits and similar animals, they're really common targets for eagle. And to me, the message here is to focus because rabbits or eagles have to really be able to focus and track these creatures visually in order to snag them. Okay, they're fast or they, they, they're likely to, to go to ground very quickly. Um, and an eagle has to sort of really keep his eye on it and then come from above very suddenly. An eagle, like I mentioned before, can see a rabbit from two or three miles away, and so it's it's really a matter of um, being very, very aware as the eagle. You can also um, look up the meanings of these animals. So if it's a rabbit versus um, maybe a prairie chicken or something that they're that they're eating, um, it it may have a little bit different meaning for you. Rabbits in particular often can embody fear and scattered thinking. So if it's a rabbit that you can see your eagle um, kind of interacting with a rabbit, the message could easily be about staying fearless and focused with your higher vision and not allowing distractions. So in addition to small prey, eagles have been known to take down some pretty large prey as well. They can bring down much bigger prey than they can even carry and even up to about small deer. So to me the message here is to really think big and believe in yourself you can go after big goals when you have eagle energy when eagles with you don't sell yourself short right you you can really think big and and have those big goals and you can attain them um, another common thing for eagles to prey upon is fish and and by the way there's a lot of different types of eagles and in particular there are sea eagles or fish eagles that will be more fish eaters amongst them the bald eagle of uh, the United States um, or in North, North America and um, but fish is a very common food for these these particular eagles and here we're talking about the water element element of water which represents the subconscious the intuitive often the feminine as well okay and the fish is a symbol of fertility so looking at the eagle diving down into the water and bringing up this very you know uh, symbol of abundance and fertility this can really indicate a union of masculine and feminine or in a way of uniting that masculine and feminine to create you know have this divine creation but in in this case it's kind of a flash of lightning sort of way if you're looking at the actual hunting behavior of diving down um, lightning from above is like divine conception or divine revelation so this could be a symbol of I mean look if you're seeing this a lot you could be looking for just kind of keep an eye out for those aha moments or divine message mess messages <laughs> um, things that could be revealed to you in a sudden or dramatic way um, in a very contrast to that uh, eagles will also eat carrion and this may be anything from salmon right washed up during a salmon run um, you know, or leftovers of another animal's kill. And I'm seeing this here a couple things. One is that you don't always have to bust your butt, okay? Eagles um, have a lot of power, and sometimes people with the eagle energy, if you're a very powerful person, it can be, and again, with the solar connotation too, eagle can have a lot of that fire energy, okay, that can have you being like kind of going and going you don't always have to bust your butt sometimes there's a free meal <laughs> so don't necessarily you know think that you have to be hunting things down all the time also it's a real lesson in humility okay as powerful 
as he is. The eagle's not above slumming it once in a while, right? And and the message is like, don't turn up your nose at an easy meal that, that comes your way. And even if it's not necessarily um, bright and shiny, you know, look and see where an opportunity is that you could really benefit from and even if it doesn't suit your ego it might be just the thing for you at the moment you know especially if you need to get your energy up okay don't don't be too don't let pride get in the way of giving yourself the nourishment that you need or the refuel or whatever it is and then lastly um, there's eagle and snake which is a super super common or often represented um, motif in his art historically from ancient times on and there are quite a few species of eagle that will eat snakes and the snake has a special relationship with eagle okay snakes will eat eagle eggs so they're one of the few predators of this magnificent bird and as symbols they really do embody opposites in a lot of ways okay we have the ground versus sky the cold-blooded versus the the, hot, the heat the solar energy right so um, there's there's a lot of just kind of polar opposites between eagle and snake and so eagles often depicted as eating the snake and this symbolizes the triumph of, di of divine order over evil right um, um, light prevails over dark uh, God prevails over the devil. You know, the, the, the snake often symbolizes the devil or you know, kind of that evil um, doing. But but nature gives us a bigger picture of this, okay? So rising above this polarized view of good versus evil, nature shows us that in the bigger view, the eagle and snake are not truly enemies, but they're interdependent, okay? So remember that the eagle has this ability to see in multi dimensions so here we're looking at the higher the bigger picture it's really the story of life death and resurrection snake represents the life force it also represents death okay and it's bound to earth when eagle comes along and eats it the energy of the snake becomes that of the eagle is transformed and transmuted into a higher energy so eagle here becomes an alchemical symbol of transmutation, of the purification of the soul through the ascension process. So this really is related to any kind of ascension or resurrection. It's it's definitely related to the the um, the Christ myth, right? This um, you know moving from a lower dimension of being into a higher dimension remember that coming back to this ability of the eagle to see in different ways sometimes it's helpful to see in that polarized way right um, it helps us to sometimes recognize that you know this this is not energy that I need to that you know that that I should welcome into my life and just to draw that line and you know be very black and white but in the bigger 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 picture understanding that you know all evil is actually here God is bigger than evil right God is everything so all evil is contained within the whole and so when we understand that we can overcome an evil in a bigger sense in that you know if you're overcoming something that you perceive as evil and taking it out without understanding its role that it's played in helping you to evolve then at some point at some level you're always going to be kind of stuck there in that polarized okay but when you can understand that first of all it's there in its own way to nourish you that everything that happens to us is there for us right then you can take the lessons that you've learned through whatever hardships have come and really take them assimilate them and use them as energy to rise above into the true glory of who you are so I hope that you've enjoyed this little journey to the spiritual meaning of eagle. If you have found it helpful, please go ahead and hit that like button. 
Also, if you'd like more videos like this, then hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. You can also check out my playlist of animal spirit videos and I'll leave the link below as well to subscribe to my email list. When you do, you'll get a, a couple of virtual coloring sheets as well as a meditation to meet your spirit animal guide. So thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you again soon.